Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I created a geometric feather design in Adobe Illustrator for use on merchandise. Obviously, you can apply this to a bunch of different end uses. I'm just obsessed with having my artwork printed on clothing. Today I'm going to try and make this nice and easy for you to follow along with, but if there's anything I miss, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can clarify something for you. Without wasting any more time, let's just jump into Illustrator and get started. All right, here we are in Illustrator. I've got a new square document set up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is hit Command R to pull up the rulers. And then I'm gonna go over to the, the side ruler here, click on it and drag out a vertical guide roughly to the middle of our document. The next thing I'm gonna do is set up a set of swatches to help me keep the illustration consistent. So if you hit M, pull up the rectangle tool, hold down Shift to constrain and create a square. The first square here is just a plain black square and I'm going to hold down alt and shift and drag out a copy. This copy, I'm going to take the fill which is currently black and flip it so that the stroke becomes black and the fill is none. And we'll try a 15 point stroke. This stroke is going to serve as the largest, the thickest stroke on the document. Uh, and it may be different in your illustration based on the size of the canvas that you chose. So visually, you want to look for something about this thick. With this um, swatch still selected, hit Command D to transform it again, create another copy. And we'll drop this down to a 10 point stroke and Command D one more time. And we'll create a five point stroke. Now having these swatches up here, are handy because if you're working within your document, within your illustration, and you've got a series of shapes, you can keep everything um, consistent by using the eyedropper tool. If you press I, and you can now select these strokes that are up here in your set of swatches, and then that way you've got confirmation and you know that everything is gonna be the same three strokes throughout. It just gives you a little bit more organization and consistency throughout your illustration. To set up the base shape of your feather, we're gonna start with the ellipse tool. Hit L on the keyboard to pull that up. And then hover over the middle guide that you set up and holding down Alt, create an oval roughly about there. Let's use the eyedropper tool, press I to pull that up and select the thickest stroke. And then hit the pen tool, use P on the keyboard to pull that up and hold down Alt and click on the top and bottom point to convert those. And then using the direct selection arrow or tool, select the middle two points and move those down to make it stockier along the bottom. Deselect everything with Command Shift A and use the pen tool again with P and click on the top point up here and holding Shift, go all the way down to the bottom over here and click once more. This line ends without a cap so for this, we're going to add just a round cap, make sure the stroke is selected first, and then add a round cap in the stroke palette. And that gives us a little bit of a finished look. And we can slide this up so it's kind of centered in our document. And there's the base shape of the feather. One of the first details that we'll add is just a simple stroke that's constrained to a 45 degree angle starting from the center point of the, the, of the feather. So if you hit the P tool or P to pull up the pen tool and then hover over the center point and click once and then hold down shift to constrain, you can create this division inside of your feather like that. And we can repeat this process on the opposite side create another division like so. 
the second side here just out of aesthetic purposes or for aesthetic purposes we can use the thinner stroke and if we click on it and hold down alt and shift when we have it selected we could drag out a copy and then we could hit command d to transform it again and create a couple versions of it So in that last step, we created some strokes that overhung the border of our feather. And what we're gonna do now is clean that up. If you hit Command Y, you'll flip over to outline mode instead of preview mode, and you can better see where the strokes are set up. If you hit A to pull up your direct selection tool, you can select the points here that are overhanging and hold down shift to constrain them. Get them to snap onto the main border of the feather. You can repeat this for the other strokes. And then if you hit Command Y again, you'll go back into preview mode. And that just tidies up the, the straight points that were overhanging the border. The next detail I'm going to add to the feather is a set of zigzag lines. To do that, I'm going to pull up the rectangle tool and holding down shift, I'm going to create a square. And then just with the regular selection tool, I'm going to drag out a copy. I've got my smart guides on so I can see where the square is aligning so that one edge is directly over top of the other. The pink text comes up and says intersect. I'm going to let go and then I hit command D and create several copies that all align. I'm then going to select all of these and using the pathfinder I'm going to unite them. And you can see here what's happened is the points where all of those intersects happened remained. You didn't just end up with one rectangle created out of four points. All of those individual points where the intersects happened um, are still there. So what you can do now is use the direct selection arrow, press A to pull that up, select the bottom points and delete those. And then holding down shift, you can select the alternating points on this line. You can see the selected points are a solid blue and the points that are not selected are hollow. And then you can drag the selected points down, holding shift to constrain them to roughly there. Now we can scale this line down a bit, drag it into our feather, scale it down a little bit more, use the eyedropper to pick up the small stroke, and with Command D, or pardon me, Alt and Shift, drag out a copy, and then hit Command D once more. And now we've got three copies of that. Just position it however you see fit. So next I'm gonna create a wavy line for the opposite side. I'm gonna take one of my zigzag lines, drag out a copy, so hold down Alt, and then with the direct selection arrow in Adobe CC, Illustrator CC, you get these rounding handles. So you drag those off all the way, you end up with a wavy line. Let's just delete these endpoints because they don't get curved. And now let's make this a vertical wavy line inside our feather. Scale it up. Place it approximately there. And then we'll use a pen tool with P and create a 45 degree angle section and just line it up with the end of that wavy line. It sits about there. We'll just clean up the end point there as well. And then that looks cool. Mm -hmm. 
The next feature that I'm going to build into the feather uses the offset path feature. So first what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up the end of this path over here by clicking on it with the pen tool and then holding down shift I'm going to draw a straight line across to the opposite side of the feather and deselect that and I'm going to select the main feather shape and I'm going to say object path offset path and I'm going to enter in a negative value in this dialog box and I'll hit preview just to see how it affects it and we need to go a bit larger so let's try 25.25 inches it's still a little bit too small so let's try 0.45 that looks good to me we're gonna hit OK now with this new path that's been created it's been offset into the middle we're gonna do the same process over again so object path offset path negative 0.45 inches again this size is based on my document setup if you're building at a different size this is going to be relative to the size of your illustration so make sure you preview it to see where it sits and find a number that's appropriate hit OK now we've got two paths that are offset inside of our um, feather shape and what I want to do here is cut them so we're going to use the scissor tool press C to pull that up and with the first shape selected and the scissor tool active let's cut on the intersect here and on the intersect in the middle and then using the direct selection arrow if you select the outside path and hit delete twice it will delete all of the outside points that you cut off of that path let's repeat the process for this second path so have it selected and then use the scissor tool press c to pull that up find the intersect point and cut and then cut on this intersect point so you've now created two separate paths use the direct selection arrow to pull up this outside piece here and hit delete twice to delete it now these two strokes let's make those the middle weight so press i to pull up the eyedropper and make them thinner that's a cool looking feature so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the design of this feather it's not something that I'm going to give you a step by step on I think it should be your taste at this point on how you want to finish up your project but I'll just run through this quickly and I'll probably fast forward the screen but it'll give you an idea of how I finish things off. So there's a feather with a bunch of random dots and lines added. I like the balance of the way that this is feeling. So I'll probably save this one up and move on and create another one. So now I'll get this file ready to send out for print. Uh, the first, I'll do, first thing I'll do here is just get rid of the palettes because those are unnecessary. And then our feather is made up of a series of different strokes and fills. I just want to simplify this to make sure there's no issues when you send this file elsewhere. 
So what I'll do is I'll hit Command A to select everything, and then I'll go Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. So now all of those strokes that used to be live have now been converted into outline shape, which means now everything has got the same fill. So I'll use my Pathfinder and just compress everything down, join it all together into one nice, clean, compound path. So this now, none of the shapes are going to shift, none of the strokes are going to change size. It is an ideal file now to send out for production. So with the feather prepared in black and white, there's a quick way that you can add some color to it. What I'll do for this is I'll copy my layer. I'll leave the layer on top, I'll, I'll hide it. And then my layer on the bottom, I'll select the compound path and I'll go to object, compound path, release. Now that's released all of the interior paths that were inside of that compound path. We'll turn our outline back on and I've got a color palette that I had created for this. So I'll paste it in. Oh, not into the hidden one. I'll paste it in front over here. Now my top compound path, I'll select this color. Now I'll lock that because I'm done with it. And I'll turn the fill layer back on. Now all of these individual paths, you can start to select them. And using this color palette, bring in some color very quickly. So there you've got a cool color variation on the black and white feather that we had created in the last step. So there you go, a really cool geometric feather design created using simple techniques. If you want to pick up a copy of this design, it's available over my Threadless shop. I'll put a link in the description down below. But better yet, take this tutorial, put your own spin on it, make your own piece of art and get it printed for yourself. There's no better feeling than being able to wear your own creations around. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, it would be really helpful if you can give it a thumbs up. The support really means a lot to me. Cheers guys, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.